Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Happy third day of Christmas to all of you. We hope that you had a wonderful celebration, whether you were at home or with family. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. With the birth of Christ, God chose two very special people, Mary and Joseph, to care for his son. Mary cared for Jesus, and Joseph worked as a carpenter to provide for his family. They were a holy family who continue to be an example in our world today. Our gathering song is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Today is uh, the feast of the Holy Family and we welcome you, especially you who are joining us online in different parts of California, in the Philippines, in India, in Belgium, in Poland, wherever you are, we are happy to be celebrating this Mass with you. There are only five of us here inside this church, but we know there are so many of you who are joining us online. We have here uh, our music director and singer, Mirila, our uh, video uh, in church, Mother Yeti, and our two deacons, Tony and Tommy. So my dear friends, let us celebrate this Holy Family Day with specialness of our own uh, Let us think of our own families our own families our homes so that we can have a real and complete celebration with the other families all over the world in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
pray. God, ever near to us, you numbered your son together with Mary and Joseph among the homeless of the earth and counted them among the countless refugees who have fled into hiding out of fear for their lives. Shield our families from the dangers to which the world exposes them. Clothe us with compassion and kindness, with gentleness, patience, and mutual forgiveness, so that we in turn may provide others with the shelter of a home where everyone is welcome. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, your Son Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Rock. Children, listen to me, your father. Act accordingly, that you may be safe. For the Lord sets a father in honor over his children and confirms a mother's authority over her sons. Those who honor their father atone for her sins. They store up riches who respect their mother. Those who honor their parents will have joy in their own children, and when they pray, they are heard. Those who respect their father will live a long life. Those who honor their mother obey the Lord. In word and deed, honor your father and mother, that all blessings may come to you. My children, be steadfast in honoring your father. Do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Do not revile him because you are in your prime. Kindness to a father and mother will not be forgotten. It will serve as a sin offering. It will take lasting root. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothed yourself with heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has grievance against another, so must you forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these put on love, that is, the bound of perfection. And let the peace of Christ rule over your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. <clears throat> let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whatever in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be respectful toward your husbands as it is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. with you and also with you a reading from the holy gospel according to luke Glory to you. when the days were completed for their purification according to the law of moses they took him up to jerusalem to present him to the lord just as it is written in the law of the lord every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, 
he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you gathered in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow, until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem, the return to Nazareth. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. My dear brothers and sisters, The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you are Lord, our justice and our mercy. to start by uh, expressing something that most of us or some of us would use whenever we are surprised or we are in uh, awe of something. I think you are very familiar with this expression because in one way or the other you have used this in the past. The expression is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> you know that expression. Yes. And if your son is Joseph, is included there. Or Jesus, or Mary. I am sharing this expression to you because this is a better expression than the F word. Pardon, I cannot say the whole word. But it's good, especially to remind us of this beautiful expression on this feast of the Holy Family. But you know, in the Philippines, we have an abbreviated way of saying Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We, we made it shorter. Even the Spaniards, speaking people are using that expression Sos Maria Osef Sos Maria Osef Sos Marcel so very short but that expresses already the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph that we are using but in a shorter and a Filipino way even in Spanish way they use that as an expression better than other kinds that we don't, expressions that we don't like. So my dear friends, today, let us ask the question, 
as we celebrate this feast, how can we be relevant in our celebration of the feast of the Holy Family, of the feast of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? But before that, let us remind ourselves of the beautiful readings that we have in the book of Sirach and uh, St. Paul's letter to the Colossians and also the message of Luke to all of us today. In the book of Sirach or it's also called the book of Ecclesiasticos, I was talking about this earlier with Deacon Tommy and I said, I cannot forget this word Ecclesiasticos because when I was a student, I failed in the exam and I have to retake it and that made me remember the word Ecclesiasticos in Sirach are related. And according to the book of Sirach, there is one portion here that I would like to read again. Those who honor their father atone for their sins. They store up riches who respect their mother. Those who honor their parents will have joy in their own children. And when they pray, they have heard those who respect their father will live a long life. Those who honor their mother will obey the Lord. In word and deed, honor your father and mother and all the blessings may come to you. So this reminds us not only of our own experience in our own family, how we have re re made ourselves respectful in loving to our parents, but reminds us in a divine way the invitation of the Feast of the Holy Family, that we can be humanly perfect probably in some certain moments in our lives, but we have the invitation on this feast day to be a member of a holy family or make our own family holy. So this is a beautiful uh, text that we have from the book of Ecclesiasticus. And in the letter of Paul, he says, Wives, respectful towards your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. So the relationship between husband and wife, parents and children are very important in the family. At this moment, I would like to share with you one particular event in my life as a father. My eldest daughter's name is Angelica. And one day, before going to school, I have been so strict because she was a little bit late. So during that time that she was going to school, she was already learning how to write. And after school when I picked her up, she had a beautiful, a, a small note for me. And when I opened it and read it, it says, Papa, I hate you underneath love, Angelica. <laughs> I will never forget that short note from my daughter. But for all of us who have our own experiences 
of interaction in our families, we know that there are some difficult moments, difficult times, and probably because of our faith in the Lord and our experience also every year when we have the Feast of the Holy Family, we are inspired, we are encouraged, we are reminded of our own responsibilities when we go back to our own families and think about what we can do better every day is a struggle and in the bible or in the gospel reading that we have today saint luke told us about the relationship again of uh, family but it's more of focus to the family of mary of jesus mary and joseph because we remember that the two old men in the presentation of jesus in the temple all a prophet and a prophetess Simeon and Anna. The role in the gospel is to remind or to express the things that has been revealed to them by the angel about the uh, mission of Jesus. And we remember that there was a time when Jesus was told by Mary and Joseph when he got lost in the temple in their own company they were looking for him and they could not find him until they found him back in the temple and they told him we have been looking for you and jesus said i must be in my father's house and that means i must continue with my the mission that my father gave me so my dear friends in that instant of interaction between mary joseph and jesus they know that their son had a mission in life that has been expressed by the, the two people uh, simeon and anna about the role as parents that their life will have so many challenges that their life will be painful as far as far as mary is concerned she will, her heart will be pierced by seven cross seven swords and we have that in the icon of uh de, de la rosa or our lady of sorrows that her heart has been pierced because in her life she will be having a difficult painful but challenging road as mother to jesus it was not only a family of joy and giving and fulfilling god's mission but it is also a painful acceptance and testimony of their own love for the mission that God has been given to them. So my dear friends, the question again that we asked earlier, how can we be relevant in our own celebration of the Holy Family? How can we as members of other families also how can we be relevant we have been doing that for some time already in our own uh, membership with a family that we call, call saint matthew family saint matthew church and we know that we have been extending a lot of help with other children other families in our campaign for food for toys and even for education and on, on Saturdays 
You know that Mother Yeti, Mother Martha, and Roberta, they are teaching uh, little kids online. And we know also that Tommy has been uh, helping a lot of families, poor families in our county, in our, in our community, through her campaign for food, together with, uh, with uh, Deacon Tony, Deacon Adelia. So they, they, uh, they are, in a way, expressing their own relevance as members of the family of St. Matthew. So we bring that back and forth. Community, personal family, so it's back and forth. The inspiration continues. And we all of us who are, who are celebrating this Mass right now, joining in this Mass, be blessed with that relevant uh, challenge of the Feast of the Holy Family. You who are in your homes praying with us online and we hope that you will continue on to support St. Matthew community of families because you are part of this community. We have a common bond of celebrating and fulfilling the challenges that we have faced. Right now, there's also an ongoing mass outside for those who cannot be here because of the pandemic. But we know that those who are still at, in their houses, in their own uh, homes online because of some difficulties, you are part of this wonderful St. Matthew family of families. Amen. Amen.
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and adonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. As members of the family of God, let us intercede for all our brothers and sisters in the peace of Christ. Our response today is, loving God, hear our prayer. For the family of the church, may the church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, like Joseph and Mary, face the uncertainty of the future with faith and hope. Trust that Christ is always with us. We pray, loving God, hear our prayer. For the family of the nations of the world, that all peoples of the world would be united in the pursuit of justice and peace for everyone, we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. For the families of refugees, may those who are fleeing persecution, injustice, and oppression Find a welcome refuge among the other nations of the world, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all families who are suffering from illness, distress, and brokenness, may all troubled families find healing, reconciliation, and peace, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all grieving families, May those families who are mourning the loss of loved ones find comfort in the home and in the hope of being reunited with all those who have preceded them in death in the great day of the resurrection. We pray. Loving God, God, hear God. our prayer. For our church family of St. Matthews, may we continue to grow in unity and peace, in wisdom and love, in all that we say and do. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. And now let us offer our own prayers out loud or in the silence of our hearts. I'd like to say a prayer for Mother Diane, who is suffering some health problems. May she find healing with our Lord, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all these and all the intentions in the stillness of our hearts, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, accept our prayers along with the prayers of our mother Mary and her husband Joseph, on behalf of all the families of the earth. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your apostles into all of us. I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but to the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to goodness you have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made, to become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to goodness you have this wine to offer, through the divine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of God's church. Your word of love, Father, became incarnate through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the fire of the same Holy Spirit make incarnate the life of your Son in these gifts and in us. For he is our Savior, Jesus the Messiah, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. With the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, He opened His arms on the cross. He put an end to death and reveal the resurrection. In this you fulfill your will and want for you a holy people. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory. of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon this gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Thank this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, 
it will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. resurrection we offer you father this life-giving bread the saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you may all of us who share the body and blood of christ be brought together in unity by the holy spirit lord remember your church throughout the world make us grow in love together with all church leaders the bishop of rome and Peter, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our dear brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with Sirach, and the teacher of wisdom, with Paul the Apostle, Luke the Evangelist, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise your union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. her children comfort us and grant us peace in our day in your mercy deliver us from every evil and protect us from all fear as we wait in the joyful hope and for the coming of our Savior and dear brother Jesus Christ Amen
This is Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who come to receive Him. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. For those of you that are at home and unable to receive communion, we offer this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Loving God, may the Eucharist we have just celebrated 
the feast of the Holy Family. Increase our love for you and for one another. As we rejoice in the baptism of Jesus, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I'm guessing there are some announcements. I will start with our giving. My dear brothers and sisters, we at St. Matthews want to express our heartfelt thanks for your continued support of our church and its ministry as we continue to fulfill our mission of bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world by offering everyone the opportunity to practice the Catholic faith with a clear conscience, regardless of their marital status, sexual orientation, religious identity, or any other barrier that, ex that would exclude them from an opportunity to get to know and love our Lord. So please, continue to give and support our church in whatever manner or amount you are able to do in these difficult times. Whether you are a member of our community or just someone who wants to support our cause, you can mail in your contribution or go to our website at www.saint-matthew.org and select the Giving tab and follow the easy instructions on how to give. We appreciate all you do for us and any amount is helpful. Please continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Stay safe, stay connected, and stay prayerful. God bless you all. Um, a couple other announcements. Um, there is a new Bible study that's in the works. It's under preparation. Um, it's going to be the study of the Gospel of Mark, and that will begin on January 25th. Um, our Sunshine Club returns on uh, January 2nd. If you have not seen this wonderful production by Mother um, Mother's Yeti, Martha, and Bernie, please tune in. It is really a blessing. Um, Wednesdays is our rosary. Uh, we do that via Zoom, and there is an invite on our Facebook page. So please make sure if you are wanting to partake in the rosary on Wednesdays, please join us. And there's one big, huge, huge um, announcement that we forgot to do on the 24th, and that is the birthday of our Deacon Tony. So um, I think we have a maybe a rendition of happy birthday that we owe to Deacon Tony. So happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, dear Deacon Tony. Happy birthday to you. I actually celebrate anniversaries now on the 21st birthday. So. <laughs> Uh, one last thing I forgot to mention, um, every week we bring food to the church and we will donate it to WSWA. Um, we'll figure out food donations exactly. Um, we're still in transition, but um, bring food every week so that we can give to those who are in need. And I believe that is it. I just had one quick oh. announcement. Um, on Christmas Eve, uh, we were running around a little crazy and I inadvertently lost some Christmas gifts. That were handed to me and I don't know where they went so if you happen to get some gifts in your pile that you weren't sure who they were from um, please let me know I, I feel like such a jizz but I don't know where they are thank you please pray that nothing is lost in God's kingdom and you'll find them Amen. my dear brothers and sisters let us go forth as father toting admonished us in his homily today to be a light to the Holy Family and for the Holy Family by continuing family tradition by honoring our fathers and our mothers and loving our children and our spouses. This Holy Mass has ended.